In this video, I'm going to go over how to extend the critter class in the case study uh, to make your own critters that have their own behavior and and uh, way their own ways of doing things. So uh, what we've got here is the um, quick reference guide, and we're looking at some information about the critter class. It imports some stuff. Uh, and then it has this comment, a critter is an actor that moves through its world, processing other actors in some way, and then moving to a new location. To find your own critters by extending this class and overriding any methods of this class except for act. We're not supposed to mess with act, all right? When you override these methods, be sure to preserve the post conditions. Um, meaning they have, to, they have to do the stuff that works with all the other uh, methods are called within act. So if it, if you have a method that returns an array list, then when you modify it, it better return a, an array list. Okay. Uh, all right. So let's, what we've got here is public class critter extends actor. So this is an actor class. This is a subclass of actor and picks up all of actors methods and fields. Um, then we've got this act method, which we're not supposed to math with, mess with, but let's just take a quick look at it. Uh, first thing it does is says, uh, is there a grid? And if there isn't, that's not good. And uh, it ends. Next thing it does is calls get actors and gets, um, and get actors does something. We don't really care right now. Uh, that gets a list of actors. Um, and then we pass that list of actors into process actors and do something to them or with them. Uh, so then we've we've interacted with our neighbors. Now we've got to move somewhere. So we call get move locations, and that returns a an array list of uh, location objects called move locks. And then we select one of them. Uh, it's pretty straightforward code from the list, and then we move to that one that we've selected. All right. So you can <coughs> as you create your work on your own critters, you can. Override get actors, process actors, get move locations, select move locations, and make move. All right, cool. So I usually keep the uh, this guy handy when uh, when I'm working co on code in the case study. So I'm just going to move it over there. Uh, we'll come back to that. So what I decided to do is create a uh, bishop critter. And what a bishop critter does is moves moves like the bishop in chess. It moves on diagonals. And I did this, I started by um, uh, copying the code from crab critter and just pasting it in, into a new class and making the changes needed. Uh, and I made my uh, bishop runner by taking the code from crab runner. You notice the code from crab runner has three lines that add new crab critters. Right? I'm not going to need that code in my bishop runner, so I deleted it and just have this one line that puts in a single bishop critter. Uh, plus, these are there just to populate the world with some other actors to make things interesting. So I've actually got a grid world here. Here's my bishop critter. And uh, it's supposed to move on diagonal, so it can go uh, that way, right, or that way, or that way, or that way. And if I step it, it's going to go in one of those directions as far as it can. That's what that's what its be move behavior is. So it went all the way up there, right? And uh, it now, if I do step again, it came back to there. Let's see if it will go the other way this time. Uh, it did, but it could only go that far because this bug was blocking it. This time it went from there up to there, and it will keep doing that, right? It moves as far as it can on one of its four diagonals. That's its behavior. So um, let's look at the code now. So here's the code for our bishop critter. And as, as I said, I just copied the code from... Um, Crab Critter, 
and this all came over from when I copied it, plus a bunch of comments, which I've stripped out just to make things uh, less cluttered. And so uh, my bishop critter extends the critter class. And uh, in the constructor, the only thing I'm doing is setting the color to red. And OK, so if we look back here at act, uh, the first thing we do is get actors after checking to make sure that the grid is there. I'm not in Bishop Critter doesn't do anything with its fellow uh, occupants of grid world. So what I did uh, <clears throat> is just comment out uh, most of get actors. I don't need it, but I do need get actors there because we're not supposed to modify act. So we've got to call get actors and it's got to return an array list of actors. So it does all that. I could erase this stuff, but I just left it there um, for now. Okay. Uh, In fact, uh, I could actually, I don't, I'm just realizing this. I don't even need that there because um, otherwise it, it, it will, it will just, um, eh, do I need it? I was going to say I don't need it because it will just get, use this, these super classes get actors method. But I don't actually want to do anything to actors, so I'm just getting I'm doing this, so we have no, it will return an empty list of actors, objects, right? And that way, um, when it process actors, there's nothing in that list, so nothing's going to happen, so I don't need to worry about it, okay? Whereas the, uh, the superclass, uh, if I use the superclass get actors, uh, I'd have to go and check and see what would happen. But I don't want anything to. I don't want to do anything with its neighbors, so um, I'm just doing that. Okay. Now this is a uh, guy is going to move in diagonals. So in get move locations, that's where I have to get those diagonal positions, right? It's going to move as far out as it can on each of its four diagonals. So that's this is where a bunch of the coding is, and a bunch is in another method that we'll look at in just a second. So uh, this came over when I copied and pasted this code. So we have an array list of locations called locks, which is um, starts out empty. Um, <clears throat> I create a variable here called direction, which is the direction of the um, that our uh, that our bishop is currently facing. And I do something a little not terribly tricky, but just to break it down, I have an array of integers called durs for directions. And what I'm doing is taking my current heading, which is in direction, which I got from up here, and getting the diagonals from that. So minus 45 is up to the left, off to the left, off to the right, uh, below to the right, below to the left. Right? And those four numbers are actually stored in durs. So now I can, because I have to check all four of them, so now I have a little for each loop that's going to go through that array um, and one at a time set diagonal equal to uh, those four values. So this is now diagonal starts out being this one, whatever the direction our, guy, our bishop is facing, minus 45. <coughs> so with that value, I want to go as far out as possible on that diagonal. So um, uh, what I do is I have a helper method here, which you're welcome to add helper methods to um, to your critter classes as needed. And uh, so I'm going to I have one called explore diagonal, and I pass in the direction I'm I'm going to explore. That's right. And let's go see what that does. So here's explore diagonal, it gets in that direction. I get the grid, uh, I get my current location, set LOC equal to it, and uh, I have another uh, location variable called neighbor lock. So while true, so this loop is gonna keep going until it escapes some, somehow, uh, there's some way to escape from it. Uh, this is a, I 
shown this to many of you. I'm not sure I've shown it to all of you, but um, you can do this as long as you have some way to get out of your loop from inside the loop, right? So, and what, what basically is happening here, as long as, the, the, as I explore down that diagonal, if, the, if, the, if it's not blocked and I'm still in bounds, I want to keep going. So, I set neighbor lock equal to the current location, uh, adjacent location in the direction that I'm searching. So that would be, you know, off to my left. I have a, a system out Pretland here, which I use to do some debugging because I, I didn't get this right when I first did it, right? Uh, I, I had some issues that I had to work out. So remember, if you're, if you're having problems putting these system uh, out Pretland statements, these debugging Pretland statements uh, to help you out, to show you information that you can't see, or use the debugger, right? The debugger's uh, great too. And uh, none of you probably make as much use of it as you should. So now what I'm doing is uh, checking that location, one off to the left, to make sure that it's in inbound, right? I ask the grid, is that a valid location? Is neighbor lock a valid location? And <clears throat> I want to know that it's empty. So I... I get what's at that location, and if it's equal to null, then it's it's um, it's empty and it's valid. So what I'm going to do is adjust location equal to make location equal to that location, right? So basically now I can I am, am moving I'm exploring down that diagonal. Now if it isn't if it's either full or it's outside, I just return loc, right? Which is the which is the last uh, valid location. Now, if I immediately hit something, right, as, as I'm looking, uh, it returns the current location of this object. So that's a possibility too. Okay. So, <coughs> return diagonal, sorry, explore diagonal returns uh, back to here. The furthest out it could go on that particular um, angle. And I'm just going to pause for a second. Okay, and I'm back. So we um, we explored down that diagonal. We get back however far it could go. Maybe not at all, in which case we have our current location. And um, if if the current, if it did get back the current location, right, meaning there, there was nowhere to go on that diagonal, if it, it, it doesn't do anything, Right, because if it's not equal to the current location, that location returns our guy's current location. Uh, so if they're, if they're not equal, then we add that to our array list of locks. We add that location. So um, <clears throat> now we just go and increment this loop here. We get the next direction. We go through that same process, exploring down that other diagonal. Again, if we it, it if it's not the if there is room to move down there, we add as far out as we can go on that diagonal. That location gets added to locks. When this is done with all four of these directions, we return locks, right? And, which is an array list of get move locations. And so what happens there? So uh, get move locations that gets returned. Uh, then we pass it into select move location, which is trivial. It just randomly selects one of the things in that array list and stores it in LOC. And then with we call make move with whatever that location is. So let's see what make move is. Uh, I didn't have to just just to be absolutely clear. I didn't have to override select move location because that's fine. I just will use the one that is in Critter. I don't need a new version for my purposes. So what I uh, what I did with make move, it's, it gets that location in that it's moving to, and uh, if lock if that's not equal to our current location, I'm not sure I need this here. Um, I think I at some point thought I did, but uh, I shouldn't 
have any locations that are equal to um, that are equal to my location. Um, yeah, I'm just what, what, why I'm pausing this is it's just a case that I hadn't really thought about, which is if it couldn't move at all, uh, <clears throat> there would be nothing in this array list. What I really probably want is uh, to make sure that uh, this is not null here. Um, and I will explore that afterwards, but it's not relevant to, to our particular problem here. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, move to the location that was selected on one of those diagonals, and then just turn uh, randomly. Uh, let's just break this down a bit, because I want to make sure you all know how this works. This is the math class, uh, and this is uh, <clears throat> when you have a capital here, it means that we're using a static method of the class. We're not making an instance of the class. Um, uh, and so this is the random method of this uh, static class, math. And uh, so that you can, you can call this whenever you want, uh, and it just generates a number between 0 and 0 0.999999, right? Um, <clears throat> so all we're doing here is we're saying if that number is less than 0 0.5, then we make angle equal to location.left, which is minus 90, else plus 90, right? And we set the new direction of our bishop critter to its current direction plus that angle. And uh, L super dot make move. Uh, so that's with this if up here. Um, yeah, so the, uh, again, I have to I have to check exactly. Uh, basically, what I have to check, I'm not going to do it right now. So I have to see what select move locations does if the array list that passed was passed into it is empty, right? Uh, it may return null, in which case uh, I would run up here if uh, LLC equals equals null, uh, then it would just do the supers make move, superclasses make move. Um, Okay, cool. So um, that's it, right? So, so the, that's the process you need to go through. Something like that process is what you need to go through when you uh, when you work on your exercises for chapter four. And again, start with uh, start with the code that's already there. Copy and paste it into new classes. Uh, modifying the runner class is really easy, and uh, the real work is in changing the, making the changes that you need to make, and get actors, process actors, get move locations, select move locations, and make move. Okay? So I hope that helps. Um, and as always, uh, feel free to ask questions if you have them. Thanks.